the regressor and the blind Saint Chapter Hardrick leaving the closed gate of the King's Palace behind. What Rene spat out was neither anger nor resentment, but a question. Is it okay? It was about the condition that Vera had proposed. She didn't ask out of emotion, knowing full well that Vera wasn't the kind of person to propose such a condition without any thought, and acknowledging that it would be something to pique Melis' interest. She suppressed her anger, knowing that it would just be a tantrum in this situation. I apologize. What came back was an apology. Rini clenched her hands tighter. You always cause trouble and apologize after. I'm ashamed. However, I want you to know that this is something I absolutely need. She bit her lip tightly. In the silence that followed, Rini took a deep breath and then responded, Just try and lose. No, just you dare try and get hurt. If you do, I really won't let it go. With her back turned to Vera, she gave that reply. She thought it was the right thing to do, because if they faced each other now, her worried face would give her emotions. Away, despite intending to say, I'm okay, so cheer up. Her emotions were hindering her ability to speak, taking her words in a different direction from what she wanted to say. Vera bowed his head to express gratitude towards Rini, who had turned her back to him. It was because he knew that Rini didn't like such impulsive actions and that it took a lot of patience for her to move past this situation after the storm had passed. Miller, who had been keeping his mouth shut until then, opened it in a lively tone, as if trying to lighten the mood. Well, well, uh, it looks like we've got our tasks sorted out. Vera will prove himself. And well find that apostle of death well find and do what Miller's eyes rolled at the sudden thought. The mood was about to get ugly again. It was Norn who stopped it. I think it's best to bring her to the Holy Kingdom. The Holy Kingdom's rule is to not force people to become believers, but apostles are different, so we should at least try to persuade her. We're right. That Let's do as the uncle said and try to persuade the kid. Norn's expression soared at the word uncle. It was a pouty, bumpy expression that reminded one of a sulking child. It was an expression ill-suited for a middle-aged man, of course. Miller wasn't considerate enough to notice Norn's expression. And this time, too, Norn had to swallow his anger with Hella's lifeless consolation. So, let's settle on that and go get some food, shall we? Mm, my gosh, I'm starving to death, with Miller's final chatter. The group headed toward the restaurant in a somewhat calm atmosphere. The group started moving in earnest the day after they met with Melis, leaving Vera behind, who now had to act alone. Rini and the other members gathered in the reception room and sat around a table to discuss how to persuade Jenny. What should we do? Rini's face showed a troubled smile, and all traces of the gloom from the day before were gone. She had managed to sort out her emotions overnight and was now able to show a more composed appearance. The members who had been worried about Rini before coming here felt relieved to see her like this and began voicing their opinions one by one. First, we need to gather information. Is background checking essential to finding a way to persuade her, Professor? That's insensitive. Investigating someone before meeting them is rude, right? The professor is a gloomy and pathetic male. What the fuck? A fight broke out immediately. As usual, Norn started mediating between the three, while Hilla, who seemed to consider the chaos as someone else's problem, spoke to Rini with a blank expression. How about starting with getting closer to her, eh, in order to persuade her, shouldn't you become friends first? But Rini added more to Hilla's suggestion with a deep sigh. She was really shy, wasn't she? Eh, I'm not sure how to get closer to her. Ah, uh, that's true. Hilla nodded her head in agreement, indeed, even to Hilla, who was usually oblivious. Jenny seemed to be very shy and fearful. For once, Hela was racking her brains and agonizing about the situation. This was the messy situation from five minutes ago, 
where a fight broke out on one side, and hum sounds could be heard in the other side. For some reason, Rini felt unsure and asked Aisha her thoughts. Aisha, what do you think? Huh? Do you have any idea how to persuade Jenny or rather become friends with her? Aisha tilted her head, of course. She hadn't thought of anything. The reason was because Jenny's reactions weren't interesting. Aisha enjoyed teasing or provoking those who would get angry. But Jenny was boring, so Aisha had no interest in her. However, she couldn't say that out loud. Aisha closed her eyes and began pondering Rini's question. Do you think she'll come with us if we teach her a lesson? She gave a very Aisha-like answer. Threaten to beat her if she doesn't follow. Her eyes sparkled as she gave a response that made it difficult to pinpoint where she went wrong. For a moment, Rini felt the urge to hit Aisha on the head for the first time since they met. Vera stood in front of the castle gate with a resolute expression. What is the matter? Uh, on the opposite side. Death Knight Hodrick faced Vera and asked that question. At Hodrick's indifferent inquiry, Vera took a deep breath and spoke. I want to prove myself. A tense, resolved tone. His heart was firm with determination. It was a situation he created impulsively, risking Rini's disapproval. Therefore, in his current position, Vera had no choice but to show a serious attitude when facing Hodrick. I know I gave you a token. Is that not enough? No, it wasn't enough. Malus did not accept the false proof. I will tell you myself. Go back now. You don't need to prove yourself to me. Though Vera had prepared himself for this, the response was the same as before. Ignoring him, Vera added another plea, bowing his head and uttering the word, Please as receiving the crown and honing his sword skills could only happen through facing Hodrick. Vera felt no shame in bowing his head. Hodrick looked at the bowing Vera and fell silent for a moment, then spoke again. You don't need to prove yourself to me. The same words repeated. Just as Vera was about to protest, Hodrick added to his statement, Calm down and listen. In saying that even without proving yourself to me, you are more than worthy. Hodrick bowed his head slightly, sighed, and continued speaking. Don't be impatient. It seems you're just frustrated by your current lack of power. But don't worry. You have talent. The power you have at this age is proof enough. I'm certain that in a few decades, you'll become so strong that you can even compare to now. You'll become a formidable force, making even this wraith seem laughable. The lengthy speech contained embarrassing praise along with his own personal justification. You'll likely become one of the strongest in the continent's history. I think it's a talent to be envious of as a fellow swordsman. So, the point I wanted to make is this. You don't need to rush or prove yourself to me to become strong. So this is a meaningless duel. Don't waste your energy on needless things. Vera and Hodrick's gazes met. Naturally, those words meant nothing to Vera. I am in a situation where I can't afford to be patient. Vera spoke with a polite tone. I am facing opponents that I cannot handle with my current strength. I have something I want to protect within all of this conflict. Therefore, I cannot simply stand by optimistically like this. Vera knew as well that he was overflowing with talent. That he was young and had time. And like Hodrick said, the potential to become infinitely stronger, that it wasn't just empty praise, however, what did that matter? Protecting Rini, who was beside him now, was more important than becoming an unstoppable force in the future. So, Vera showed his unwavering resolve and waited for Hodrick's answer. It's quite a predicament, Hodrick spoke while stroking the hilt of the sheathed sword by his waist. I am speaking sincerely, you know. Hastily built castles are only as strong as their weakest link, just like a sandcastle that collapses with the slightest push. I can guarantee this. <laughs> Facing me may promise immediate power, but it will be a poison for the deep enlightenment you should gain later. Firm words of conviction burst forth. The human heart is truly tricky. 
easily falling apart at the slightest provocation. It regrets in the face of adversity and despair. I don't want you to regret today's events when you face a wall in the future. It was still an indifferent statement, but Vera felt that it wasn't just an excuse to discourage him. Like every other undead they encountered here, the Death Knight seemed to be offering his own form of kindness, despite knowing that Vera didn't give up. For Vera, there was already something he regretted more than anything else. I will choose what I want to protect. I am more afraid of a life filled with regret for losing what I have now than one regretting my swordsmanship not improving. Vera, knowing how empty it is to live for oneself, chose Rini over any level of swordsmanship. Hardrick fell silent. He just looked at Vera, as if trying to find sincerity in those words. His ghostly eyes shone within his helmet. After a long time had passed, he finally responded. Even I do not know what will happen. With that, he drew his sword. Thank you. Vera followed suit and drew the holy sword as well, inwardly feeling happy. The outcome was, of course, Vera's utter defeat. At the entrance of the ruined castle, Vera leaned on the holy sword, gasping for air. A look of disbelief spread across his face. I couldn't catch up. It felt like chasing a mirage. Even though his sword clearly made contact, it didn't feel like it, despite evading. He was struck by every attack. It wasn't a simple matter of strength and speed, but something else entirely. Intent that must be it. Vera's expression became even more twisted. Not even my power worked. He had used his apostle's power to confront Hodrick's intention, but even that had been meaningless. No oath, no vow no declaration. Despite using everything against Hodrick, it still wasn't enough. Why, then, did even the power of the gods not work? As he began to get a headache from these thoughts, Hodrick, who had sheathed his sword, spoke. You make an oath so easily. It was criticism directed at Vera. Vera's head snapped up, his gaze fixed on Hodrick. Why do you make so many meaningless oaths? Did you know? An oath carries the weight of words that must be kept. It's not just something you blurt out. Yet, why do you burden yourself with a weight you can't bear and choose to fight? At the bitter words, Vera trembled. His expression hardened. It wasn't for any other reason. It was because Hodrick seemed to know a lot about his power. In fact, he was talking about the very issue Vera had been worrying about. How do you? His words flowed out in desperation. Hodrick stared at Vera for a long time without answering. It felt more like hesitation than avoidance. Stroking the hilt of the sword on his waist, Hodrick remained silent. This time, too, he sighed and lowered his head, giving an unexpected answer. Did you think you were the only one who used that power throughout this long history? It was an answer that made Vera's breath stop.